I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Today we are at Connecticut's Beardsley Zoo. This is my first trip to Connecticut and I'm very excited to be here. We have some great interviews planned, and I'm going to give you guys a little tour of the zoo here in Connecticut. Welcome back to my Animal Education series. And today I'm at the Beardsley Zoo, and may you ladies introduce yourself. Hello everyone, I'm Mariah. I'm Elena. Hi, I'm Ruby. And what can you tell us about the Carter Blue Butterfly Conservation Program? So here at the zoo, what we do to help the Carter Blue Butterfly is we actually raise uh, lupine plants, which is very crucial to the Carter Blue Butterfly's life cycle. It's one of the only plants that the Carter Blue Butterfly is going to lay its eggs on and then its caterpillar caterpillars are going to eat, so it's a very essential role for it. And these Carter Blue Butterflies are so very small, they're literally about the size of a dime, no way any bigger. So what we do is we actually plant these lupine plants here and then later on we transport them to New Hampshire to a protected site for the Carter Blue Butterfly. So when we plant, uh, how we start planting here is we first uh, uh, scarify the seeds, uh, so we basically cut off a bit of the seed coating so it makes it easier to germinate and then uh, we bring them all into the greenhouse and we make a, uh, they have a very specific soil and sand mixture, it has to be a specific ratio uh, to make it uh, it to make the plants able to uh, survive well. Uh, we plant them all here first. Um, we do a lot of seeds at once, um, just in case uh, some of them don't end up germinating and don't end up growing, just so we uh, get enough to survive. And I believe the number we've been doing in the past for the seeds has been anywhere from 500 to 600 seeds. Scarification and then planting about six to a pot, and this is actually the pot we use for the planting process because the lupines have such long roots, so they need all of that surface area for their roots to develop and then for the plant to grow. Um, why do they need such a specific uh, ratio of like sand to dirt for the plants to grow well? Um, it just depends on like certain characteristics of plants. They do well with different soils, different soil pHs, different weather conditions. So that kind of determines where you're going to find these plants in the wild and how you're actually going to take care of them if they were like your house plant. So for the lupine specifically, you might find them around the coast so much because they really need that heavy sand concentration within their soil. So only a part of it is actually going to be traditional soil, medium, and then most of it is actually going to be sand. So it's all based on where it's um, natively found. And where would you find these Connor blue butterflies out in the wild? So right now, um, I know they have a very big population in New Hampshire. They've actually been pushed out of Michigan and other areas, so you're going to find them up north a lot. And what kind of uh, coloration do these? Uh, butterflies have. So the Carter Blue butterflies, when they actually fold their wings um, together for um, on the bottom of their wing, it's mostly kind of like a grayish blue color. But then when they open their wings, the top side is that very bright, very bright blue, almost a shimmering sapphire. And then I believe it is the males that on the underside of their wing as well, they have a little coloring of orange. So that's how you can tell the females from the males apart. And do you know why they prefer this specific plant, or no, not really, no. Not particularly, just sometimes like over nature, some species develop to where they have very spe specific conditions they need. Um, so I think just over time, the Carter Blue Butterfly has evolved, and the lupines have worked for it, that's what they've preferred more, and now it's to the point where it's so specific that sadly their populations are failing, because that's the specific plant they need to grow and prosper. So now we have left the potting room and now uh, we're in the greenhouse, so what is the next step to make sure the plant's nice and healthy? Um, so this is where uh, we put all the plants after we've uh, potted them. Uh, we store them in here until they are ready to go outside. Um, but to get to that point, we have to do, uh, we have to get the plants potted. So uh, we start off by uh, scarif scarifying the seed, cutting off part of the uh, the shell around it to help it germinate. And we put it in a pot, we start by putting hay at the bottom, 
and then we put a mixture in that's mostly sand and a little bit of soil, which is um, the best mixture for this plant to grow. We plant about five or six in each pot, uh, t uh, just in case any don't survive. We have enough that will um, to bring to New Hampshire. And after we start to see little sprouts appear, we actually move the plants outside into the warm um, into the warm temperatures out there, because that's just a better environment for them. We water them and check on them daily. That's um, a direct responsibility of the CDC students. And then usually in um, early, even mid-July, when they have um, developed enough to be uh, consumed by the carnivore blue butterfly caterpillars, we actually transport them up to New Hampshire, which is a process we just started two years ago. Previously, we actually had officials come down here. They took them up there. But now we actually have CDC students and other representatives go up to New Hampshire and plant them in the reserve. And what are your roles in the CDC here? We do a lot of educational work, so we'll talk about animals on exhibits as well as like what the animal is and what SSPs are, and SSPs are species survival plans, so that's for animals that are either going extinct or critically endangered, and how they're in a rehabilitation program, that's just to keep their numbers up as well as like increase the species like carnivore butterflies and one of those because they're an extinct, like going extinct animal. So that's one of the things here that we do. We also do a lot of other conservation work. Um, a lot of what we do is removal of invasive species. We spend a lot of time doing that. Um, we'll do trail maintenance. Um, we do work with uh, like fish and wildlife around Connecticut. Um, so we're involved in a lot of other conservation uh, locally too. And basically just the grounds of CDC is education. Education for the public because that's really the first step, especially if you want to take it upon yourself to help these species, not only animals, but plants and everything that's plogging our environment. You can do it as long as you're aware of what's going on and the proper ways that you can make a difference. Well, thank you so much for telling us about these uh, carnivore butterflies. And if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Kosher. And as always, I'll see you next week.